tissue engineering is cool. For those of you that don't know what tissue engineering is, it's basically the engineering of tissues, or as Wikipedia puts it, the use of a combination of cells, engineering, and materials methods. I'm liking the plural in materials. And suitable biochemical and physiochemical factors to improve or replace biological tissues. Tissue engineering involves the use of a tissue scaffold for the formation of new viable tissue for a medical purpose. I prefer my definition, I think it's short and sweet, but you know, take your pick. I've been looking into tissue engineering as part of the research I've been doing into preventing organ rejection. Basically, if we could print organs that are specific to you with your DNA and like your receptors around it, then your immune system wouldn't start attacking it and your body wouldn't reject it. Which means there'd be no organ rejection, no transplant list, no donor organs, none of it. One day, you could potentially walk into a hospital and they could take, I don't know, some blood or, you know, some, it would be really cool if they could just get cheek cells, but I really doubt that. And then they could go to a lab, they could build you an organ specifically to you, and then they could replace your current one with that. And you would get your organ so much faster than you would right now. Did you know that last year, 400 people died on the UK's transplant list? And that on average in the US, 20 people die a day from the lack of availability of organs for organ transplantation. Like, that's insane. But that's just a fragment of the benefits tissue engineering could have to our society. I watched this TED talk the other day, and it spoke about how we could use tissue engineering for drug trialing. Apparently, 90% of drugs that are successful in animals aren't successful in humans. Which makes sense. I mean, if you consider the fact that, you know, they're a completely different species of animal. However, some drugs that are successful in animal trials cause horrible consequences in humans. There was this one trial in the UK where they were testing a life-changing drug. It had proven successful in mice, it had proven successful in monkeys, and now it was like human trials. And there were eight participants. They used a dose which was 500 times lower than that that proved safe in mice and monkeys. However, those people would experience rapid multi-organ failure, and would end up having amputations, and although they survived, we have no idea how this could impact them long term and the detrimental effects that this multi-organ failure could have had to them. But this scenario and the frequency of scenarios like these could be reduced by tissue engineering. If we could print an organ, right, then we could do drug trialing on that specific organ, which means we could see how a specific drug would interact with that tissue. And then we can determine whether that drug should enter human trials. This could make us less rely on animal testing, eliminate drugs that don't work sooner, and increase the probability of success in human trials. Ultimately, we could end up with better, safer, and cheaper drugs. Because the average drug, right, takes like 2.2 million, 2.2 billion, it takes a lot of money to be produced, right? And then for it just to fail is, well, not great. And not only that, but it also takes 12 years on average for a drug to reach the market. So if you could shorten that by, let's say two years, you could save millions, if not billions of pounds in drug trialing and in the production of a specific drug before it goes to market, which means a drug, when it gets brought to you and when it reaches the market, it could be safer and cheaper than it ever was before. And cheaper is a very, very important factor. One that I personally didn't notice until I did work experience at a hospital. And there was like this one sheet, it was like how much each drug costs. And I believe it was per like individual drug, right? The most expensive drug on that list was 167 pounds. So imagine that patient who has to pay 167 pounds for one drug. Then imagine how that person might need to take that pill two or three times a day for a year. Imagine how much money that person is spending just for a drug. That doesn't even include other treatments. And like, we're fortunate that the NHS is like paying for it, for like the majority of the drugs that people end up needing, hopefully. But so many people don't. So many people aren't fortunate enough to have something like the NHS. And like, if you go to the US, for example, they, they don't have an NHS. So if a patient there needs to pay for this medical treatment, that's a lot of money. So even if we could reduce that from 167 pounds per pill to 120, that person, although granted it's still seriously expensive, but would save thousands of pounds. 
depending on how long they do it for. Saving £50 is still better than not saving any at all. And if you can do that for a large population of people, right, then you might end up saving millions of pounds in drugs, which would be insane. But again, that's just a small portion of the benefits that tissue engineering can have in our society. So in drug trials, people can save a load of money and in transplantation, people might not experience all rejection, they might not die on transplant lists, but that is just a fragment. There's so much that tissue engineering has to offer if we can crack it and make it work and if we can you know actually build organs right now we're building like tissues and stuff um which is still really really cool and we're actually like using them in some cases um but that's like a whole nother video tissue engineering aims to find cures not treatments for often chronic diseases which is why tissue engineering is so important but also so interesting and why I made a video on it. So I hope you enjoyed it. Please like and subscribe and I hope to see you again soon. Goodbye.